This photo is from the book called Digital Restoration by Satan, which is great for learning how to do restoration work. Um, you, will, you may have to read the book a couple times. It's very um, deep and has a lot of um, excellent examples to show you how to correct photos. Now something I want to throw out there real quick is if you have this uh, layer selected by accident and you go to the enhance menu, notice how things are dimmed because you're on this layer. So if you want to work on this layer, make sure it's selected and you see a lot more commands open up. So let me press Control Alt Shift E. Oh, excuse me, Control Alt Shift E to make a stamp layer. I'm going to rename it Stamp S T A M P. Enter. Now, how would we correct this photo? Yes, we can go to Enhance, Adjust Color, Remove Color Cast. That was an option. Maybe we can remove color. Okay, it's an idea. Let me click Undo. We can probably choose maybe Adjust Hue Saturation. But this applies it directly, so I don't I don't like that. If I can get around that, I would I'd rather do that. Maybe there, since it's an 8-bit, which I can show you right here, it's an 8-bit. So let me choose an adjustment layer. Ah, oh, they have hue saturation as an adjustment layer. That's great. And I can see that this is in this has a lot of blue in the photo here, so I probably would go to the blue channel here, click on the plus eyedropper, and sample that delicious blue here. Okay. And then I would probably bring down the saturation to reduce the saturation of the blue and look at that. I get the original photo from which I can add sepia or colorize it if I needed to. And what's great, the adjustment layer is non-destructive and it doesn't add to the file size. Okay, so let me go ahead and close that. Now let's talk about the PSC workflow. Remember, where is sharpening? Number 16. So if you need to reduce an image, then sharpen, you would do that. If you don't need to reduce an image, you would then sharpen at that point. And then finally, save for web or print. So sharpening is one of the last things that you do. Okay, so let me go ahead and close that just to show you. Now we have a picture of two people. So if I want to sharpen an image, what would I do? Um, first, I would create a duplicate layer. Okay, so it doesn't mess with the original. And I can also compare the difference. I will go into the Enhance menu and then choose Unsharp Mask. Notice where it is. Unsharp and Adjust Sharpness are at the bottom of the menu. That's also telling me that it should be done last. Okay, we're going to choose Unsharp Mask. Now, what is this Unsharp Mask thing? Well, it increases the contrast in your pixels. So those dark pixels become darker and the light pixels become lighter. This result um, looks like a cleaner, sharper image, but it doesn't bring focus to your image, okay? It just increases the contrast on the edges to make it look like it. Okay, so it can't bring a picture that's out of focus in focus. Okay, so that's a misnomer. Now, always make sure that it's viewed at 100%, and if you can, always go for the eyes, because the eyes are the most important part. Make sure your preview is on. Push these sliders to the left here, and let's talk about what they are. Okay, the amount right here controls how weak or strong the um, the mask image that is blended in will be. Thus, it controls how much the edge contrast will be added and how much apparent sharpness we will get. Okay? It goes up to 500. Okay? And now, what is this slider underneath? Radius. Radius controls the degree of unsharpness the mask image will have. So, it determines the width of the halos that the mask will produce. So, the higher the radius, the more evident of the sharpening. The less the, the inverse. Okay, and then we finally have this called threshold. Threshold selects how much adjacent pixels needed to be considered as an edge. I rarely um, play with the threshold, but um, let's see what the radius here. So if I increase the radiusness, look at that. Oh, so we'll back up. I usually leave it around 0.5 to 1. Let me back down. There you go. When I click on this image area here, I can see it before, after before after you want to be careful because you can see some highlights here you don't want to bring them out too much if you're uh, sharpening for print sometimes you want to over sharpen it just a little bit more for the print you don't need to do that for the web but for print you do okay now let's see a before and after see it's a little see how our face looks a little fuzzy and then we bring it into focus before after look at the yellow here before after okay let me close this and let's choose this picture here so first 
we can see that it's in 16 bit. We can apply the sharpness to it, but this will apply it directly to that background. You don't want to do that. That's a no no. And if you're in sharpening, you're probably at the last steps anyway, so it should be in 8 bit. But let me go ahead and convert it to 8 bit and call it original. And then press Ctrl J to make a copy. Enhance, adjust sharpness. Okay, we'll move this out of the way. If you want to see a certain part of the image, just click outside and we'll zoom into this area. Make sure you're preview. You can adjust the amount of radius as talked about in the other sharpness, removing the blur. You can use Gaussian blur, you can use lens blur, or you can use motion blur and adjust the angle. You can also click more refine to make it better, as you would say. I usually leave, you know, leave it on lens blur. Okay. And then I'll move this out of the way just a little bit more here so you can see the trees. And look what happens when you over sharpen. They look crispy and grainyish. So you have to really be careful not to over sharpen. Look at that. Ugh, looks horrible. So let's back this off. And then click OK. Let me zoom in a little and see how this might look. And then click before. After, before, after, not much, but a little bit. Okay, I probably would add just a little bit more sharpness to it. Okay.